Hello and welcome to another episode of Brand Retro. Today on the podcast, we have Lindsay Coffee on the podcast. Lindsay, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. How are you today? I'm doing very well. And this is going to be an interesting one because we were kind of uh, chatting here before we started on how this topic really doesn't get the attention maybe it deserves. And, and it's this idea of being eco-friendly, being uh, sustainable, and how does that fit into branding and what does that really look like? And I think it's it's fun to hit a topic like this that doesn't get covered as much, but I also think that I think it's coming from your perspective. I think it's going to be interesting to hear what your thoughts are and what that really means for different brands. Because you get, you do see brands that embrace it, but they don't celebrate it. It's not like something that they really use within their marketing message. Most, most, I should say. So with that said, let's just jump right in. Tell me a little bit about you, your background, how you got to this point, And then let's jump in on the main topic, which is that kind of that eco-friendly slash branding mindset. Yes, very excited for the main topic. But before that, a little bit about me. I have worked in the fashion industry for over a decade, working as a model. So I've always had a perspective of just consumerism, marketing, business in general from such a different perspective than I feel the general public. And you see a lot of things on how the motives, the intentions behind closed doors. And then I really stepped into my environmental activism, which is my true passion in life. And my goal is really to just raise our collective environmental consciousness, which led me to work with eco-branders as their head of impact and community engagement and impact awareness, where I help educate consumers and businesses and businesses also within the marketing sector, as well as business to business and business to consumer. So everyone across the board and educating them about the choices that we have, the solutions that we have, and how we can have purpose and profit within our business and how we can incorporate mindful choices within our own individual lives that create the same, if not better, more enjoyable purchases. So it's really all about mindfulness on both ends and both sectors and how we can reshape our current culture. Yeah. Was there something that, was it an observation or was there anything that kind of led you to make that connection? Or was it, because coming from the fashion industry, I'm just wondering how, how you diverted your focus there. So it's interesting because it really, there is an answer to that. It's a long one, but I did go on a very spiritual healing journey, which I'm sure you're not even expecting this answer, but that ha that's where it stemmed from. And now my environmentalism has always been there. It's always been a staple within myself and a passion of mine, but within the fashion industry, specifically within merchandising and that sector, it developed later in life where I had gone on this journey and coming out of it, I saw that even though, yes, I was in the industry or am in the industry, but I do not have a direct role in manufacturing. I don't have a direct role in marketing in that sense, but I was still involved and indirectly connected where I wasn't really addressing it or doing anything about it. I was just letting it exist. And fortunately, I was given a platform where I no longer had to turn my cheek and I felt I could still be involved in this industry where at the moment I felt a little hypocritical. I could still be involved in the industry while no longer looking the other way and doing what I could with the platform I had. And that's what kind of directed me on that path where I dove deeper into the fashion industry, where it pertains to humanitarian efforts and justice within our garment workers all the way to the environmental impacts that business and consumers are making. So that was just a short story of a long story of the shift of just that journey that led me down that path. Right. So from your vantage point, then let's talk about some of, I mean, you don't have to name names, but let's conceptually talk about some of these brands that kind of embrace that eco-friendly mindset and build that into their brand message and what that looks like. Perfect example is eco-branders themselves. They even have eco-branding like in the name, basically. Yep. So they're perfect for that. And what eco-branders is, for those who don't know, is an eco-conscious branded merchandising retailer. And it's one of the first in the U.S., actually. So basically, the branding position of eco-branders, it's providing eco-conscious, impactful branded merchandise. And to elaborate on that, it immediately, they immediately allow you to contribute positively with every purchase and 
it is shown within the transparency and within the documented accountability um, of the company. And the overall identity is for people and for planet. And we believe in doing better together. So there's so much that falls into, I feel like, eco-conscious consumerism and eco-conscious businesses where we do all have that similar message, but sometimes maybe some tailor to specific niches within the environmental realm. And all of that plays a part in brand loyalty and it creates it because you are having that target audience. And what I do love though about eco-branders is it's not, it's niche as in it's focusing on eco-conscious products, but we create brand loyalty around people that are not just environmentally friendly, but even if they want to support specific causes, as we have a pool of uh, partnerships. And we have, we're the favorites among our fellow earth friends, you know, who share the same values. And we have purposeful products that do make an impact. And we also practice what we preach. So on our website, you can even see the organizations that we partner with, whether your purchase is contributing to ocean cleanups, pollution, reducing CO2 emissions from the atmosphere. We have biodiversity that we focus on. And you can also shop by impact, which is really cool that I don't see a lot of companies doing where you can even search if you want to focus on climate action or if you want to focus on wildlife, if you want to focus on water, the water crisis. So there, there's so much Everyone can look at this from two different scopes where maybe it could be a little bit too much effort, or you can look at it as an opportunity to be creative and innovative and do something that other people aren't doing and stand out from the rest. And that I feel also falls into brand loyalty because you are going above and beyond and you're, again, practicing what you preach and standing for what you believe in and you're creating all these opportunities and options and even educational material for your consumers. And then also it doesn't even have to stem, our loyalty doesn't only stem from fellow tree huggers, anyone who wants to go green. You could even really not be interested in sustainability, but because of our products and where we are sourcing them and how they're made and our strict product tri criteria that we every product has to pass to bring them on, our products are durable. They're of great quality. And so you don't even have to be a tree hugger to understand that you're going to get so much more from a company that is transparent about where they're sourcing, what materials are being used to make your product, and it increases revenue by attracting more customers. So you yeah. get both, both sides of it, eco-conscious and non-eco-conscious customers. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, because I've seen this in my career and, and in my industry, is that basically if you're not 100%, then you don't fly the flag is how I've seen it. Cause there's like this imposter syndrome where, you know, to your point, like if I'm not hugging every tree that I, I can't really, I can't be a tree hugger. But if you're hugging half the trees, you're still a tree hugger, you know, like it doesn't mean you can't do positive things oh, absolutely. For, the, for the environment or whatever. There's not a criteria or a threshold in which you have to hit to qualify. But I've seen that. I've seen that with brands that I've worked with that they're doing some things. But they're like, I'm not going to tout that because we're not buying the right light bulbs in our office. I think you're overthinking this. But to be fair, I do think that if you get the peanut gallery going, they might criticize you for that. They might find that as a weakness. So it is a double-edged sword. But I, I wanted to get your thoughts on that because my belief is, you know what? If you're doing good things and you're, you know, if you're, if you're, tr I mean, I don't drive a, I don't drive an electric car. Therefore, do I not qualify to be somebody who cares about the environment? I was just going to say, it might depend on who you ask. Just, it's one of those things where I think people feel like either they're afraid to, or they feel like it's imposter syndrome if they celebrate what they are doing. So I am actually really glad you mentioned this because there are so many people out there that think they have to go all in and they don't. So now when it also comes, there's different perspectives from the individual to the business, but, uh, and we can also like get into greenwashing a bit, which is a huge no-no though. And so when it comes to just environmentalism, we don't live in a utopia. It's not a perfect society. We're not perfect people. And there's times where there is no right answer because every answer does have an impact, but it's about choosing the lesser of two evils. And 
being mindful about your choices, the options that you have, and making the best one that is suitable for you and for your lifestyle in that moment. And that's all we can really ask for some people. And that's really, I feel like, what I can ask for a majority of people because there is a small pool that really want to give it their all. But even myself, I'm not, I don't live zero waste. I think that's very incredible, incredibly hard to do. And there are some people that do it and it works for them in their lifestyle, but it's not for everyone. And so I'm glad you asked because you can still do better without feeling like a fraud or that you are an imposter or you have to go all the way. And it's, I feel like that dilemma that is stopping us from evolving more efficiently because everyone has this, I have to have this perfect, these perfect actions, this perfect mentality to do. But where it gets a little questionable is when a company is greenwashing, where maybe they are throwing a leaf on their product and they're calling it green and they trick you into thinking that they're doing things that they are not. But if you can find a company that is transparent about it and they have a credibility behind them and they can verify the, their supply chain, have certified documentation and cer well certifications in general, then you'll be able to support your claims. So you don't have to be a hundred percent green sustainable company, but maybe you're doing one thing really well and you want to highlight that and you have the proof to do that and the documents to do that then you should do that because you're still doing something that's positive and ha making a positive impact. And, and I would, I'm just looking at the source here, but I look at companies like Shady Ray's sunglasses or even Life is Good. They do a lot of different things, but they only tout the things they do. They don't claim to be more than that. They don't claim to be different than that. They're not, like you said, they're not greenwashing. Like they're just saying, hey, a certain percentage of our proceeds goes to cleaning up beaches on the West coast or whatever it is. They're taking it, they're owning it and they're celebrating it because it is cool. It's neat that they're doing that. It's neat that they're taking those efforts, but they're not necessarily adopting this. We're all things to all people thing, which I think in many ways, from a branding perspective, it protects them from the trolls of criticism and all those different things. Because I think that's what people fear is they don't even want to, I don't even want to get in that game. Because I don't want to be criticized for all the things I'm not. And I never said I was those things. So I don't know why anybody cares. But that's just how it works. It's kind of when you just cross that line where you are trying to make that your brand identity. Whereas opposed to just highlighting it. So that's whenever you step on over into greenwashing. Where you can be proud of something that you have whenever you're able to support the evidence of your claim. Yeah. But when you just rely on that and it becomes your identity and what, how you want people to see you, that's when you can be trolled for it because that would be technically categorized as greenwashing. And also, I don't know if you're familiar, but the EU ended up passing this directive creating necessary documentation for any type of brand that claims to be green or use any type of green jargon like sustainable, eco-friendly, earth-friendly like eco-conscious, and they have to have the evidence to support those claims. And they cannot use carbon neutrality just because they offset their car carbon emissions elsewhere, but it has no direct affiliation with their current business model. So that's just been passed in the EU. And I do think that should be incorporated in the U.S. And I feel that we would follow soon because, again, that also is very misleading and you're misleading customers into thinking that you are one way because you're really honing in on it when really... It's not really impacting your business model. It's an indirect impact that you're making, but you're just trying to make it your brand identity. So that's where the confusion can be placed. So what do you think the gray area is there? I have my own thought, but what, what do you think that gray area or that distinction is? So truly, one of the things I even advocate for is everyone should go, um, should invest in carbon offsets because that is one of the easiest things to do without altering any form of your business model. It alters nothing amongst your business operations. And so all it is, is basically profit sharing in a sense where you are donating your money, some of your profits to offset your offset emissions elsewhere. So that's why I feel it's the easiest form of greenness that you can incorporate into your business as it you don't really have to do anything but if people if companies are doing that they lean into it even though their company itself specifically has zero green strategies it's just their profit sharing and donating to 
an organization that is offsetting emissions. Yeah. So when I feel something within the company is not actually changing on a fundamental level, it's not really necessarily something you should be praised for because it's not something that you've actually had a hand in altering within your own business model. So when you can see something that, that had been altered within your own business model that you had everything to do with, then that's somewhere where you can be praised for it and you can advocate for it, um, with your business and be proud of the work and the effort that you did. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I think what, what I was thinking of or where I was going in my head anyway, was this idea of kind of the, the culture side versus the actual physical manufacturing production side. Cause I, th I think they're two different things. I think personally, I think like within the production side, within a product, obviously, yeah, don't, you can't really lie about that. Like, where are you sourcing these things? What is it made of? That's just a kind of a physical black and white. Like it's a, there's a criteria there where either you are or you are not. And then I think there's a, a culture mindset. There's a, there's probably lives within the organization itself of we say we're these things, but our actions don't match it. Like that to me is that's a different thing. So you can be both, you could be one or the other, but I think each of them comes with a little different level of criteria or seriousness, but as it plays into brand authenticity and how you position yourself as a brand, I think coming back to that importance thing, if you're going to put it out there, you have to back it up. You have to be real about it and you have to, you have to live up to the claim that you're making. And I know there's a lot of companies out there that make those efforts and just say nothing. They're just not putting it out there for anybody to see or debate, which is fine too. But I think for those companies that are flying that eco-friendly flag, I think it's a slippery slope if they're not living up to it. Oh, absolutely. And that's why it's so important to, as a consumer, to know what to look for as well, because there are a lot of companies that even state all the positive things they're doing for the planet, but it's just, it's so vague and all, and there's no links to click to uh, discover further and to explore further, to learn more about it, to read more about it. So when you are trying to look for credibility within the, those companies, you have to show that or the company has to show this tr for transparency that they are holding themselves accountable and that you are able to document their claims and be able to trace through their supply chain which is also a very difficult thing to do so mm -hmm. uh, the brands that are able to do that uh, we have to we have to applaud them for it and even then because the supply chain is just so complex it's so difficult to track within multiple regions multiple countries so there are a lot of limitations as well, where you can only track so much, but if you're really putting in the effort and you're trying your best and you're being honest about it, where sometimes, which is funny, somebody will claim something that they're a hundred percent this, or they're doing a hundred percent of that, where there's actually no way to actually tell the exact percentage of where something came from or how it was sourced or where it was made. It's very interesting because you have to be careful where there's somebody maybe, um, claiming something, but they are not providing the evidence to back it up. And then you are having somebody also who is green, but then they're really claiming something that's super difficult and complex to actually verify or have a specific number or something to represent that claim. Something I like to say, like falling right in the middle is doing the best you can with the resources and the assets that you have and with a business that you want to run and you just be completely honest about it. Because again, at the end of the day, no one will ever be perfect. Right. And I, I couldn't agree with that more because I think brand loyalty is its own thing. And I think we using eco-friendly messaging, whatever badge you put on your site, those kinds of things, you're going to collect fans. You're going to collect followers and brand lovers. That's a qualifier for them. They're going to, they're going to look at that and it's misleading if you're not living up to it. Because you layer that now on top of the brand experience that you should be giving, regardless of your position on sustainability and those kinds of things, it's a double-edged betrayal in a way. If your product doesn't live up to the hype or it does live up to the hype and then they find out it's not eco-friendly on the backside or however that works. So I think it's a, it's, it could be a very smart strategic way 
to build brand loyalty, but it could be a very dangerous way to damage brand loyalty, if not authentic. And again, I'm not trying to talk people out of it by any means, but it's a touchy subject. And I think for those who are going to celebrate it and fly that flag, I think they just need to be super conscious about kind of what, what they're playing with here. It's always dependent on the wording. Wording is yep. important in every sector. And especially when it comes to marketing and branding, if you are, if you have that proper wording that articulates your brand, its missions, its values, its vision, and you're just honest about it, that will save you so much long-term, especially if you have to do any type of damage control, which probably won't even exist because you've been on it, honest from right. the get-go. And yep. Make it easy on yourself and just yeah. be upfront. Yeah. And even like to be a certified B Corp, you have to fall within the assessment. You have to at least have a minimum score of an 80 out of 200. And do you know how many companies that are certified B Corps that are right in the 80 like range? Like they're not even close to 200. Like 200 is like perfect score. So the amount, the number of companies on that scale that are even just in the 80s alone, that's just amazing though that they're still a certified B Corporation. But yeah, okay, they just made it. But they're still doing so much good and just they're so much better than even their counter their counterparts where they're making an active effort to put all this time and money into their own company as an investment to show you how much they believe in what they're doing, believe in their brand and asking you to do the same, which really does increase brand loyalty and increases your reach to for a new audience and sec secures the one that you already have. So there are so many benefits. I feel more benefits than not to being a, just a business with purpose. You don't even have to be environmental, environmentally friendly, just have that purpose. And that says a lot to your competitors as well as to your target audience and beyond that. Yeah. So Lindsay, tell us more yeah. about where we can follow what you're doing, learn more about this whole concept. And just follow along with you and everything that you're pushing here. Because I think it's a noble cause. And I, to be honest, I, I mentioned this earlier. I don't think there's a lot of people pushing this. I don't think there's a lot of people talking about it. Yeah, I agree. And so I always like to highlight that and just really educate people on their options. Because I truly feel a lot of inaction isn't really from, really in any sector, not even just environmentalism, but specifically yeah. talking about it, I feel a lot of inaction stems from a lack of knowledge rather than a lack of caring. So just educating people about the options that they have and knowing that it's never just one or the other. They could have a variety of them to choose from and educating them about that and even the impacts that they do currently make with the options that they normally go to. And yeah. it's something that we all have to do in order to reshape that culture. But yeah, you can definitely find me on my website, lindsay-coffee.com. You can check out EcoBranders at ecobranders.com, which we also have education and awareness focus with an educational vlog, a video series called Green Growth, where you can learn sustainable tips for your business and also plays a part in consumers as well. And also my social handles, basically all of them are at Lindsay Marie Coffee and EcoBranders is also at EcoBranders as well. Excellent. We knew, and we will drop all these links into the show notes too, so that everybody can easily find this stuff. Thank you for being on the podcast and for bringing this topic to us. I think this is a fun one and it's different and it's one we've not talked about yet. So that's pretty awesome. So I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And I'm glad we were able to talk about something that's hidden more so than not. So I'm glad to bring it to light. Same. So thanks. Liz. If you'd like to learn more about CyberDogs, share your thoughts, or even ask a specific question about this episode and or the brand retro mindset, contact me directly at mike at cyberdogsmarketing.com.